those of you that don't know, I am Jeff Goff, uh, Dr. Four on IRC and in many other venues, aside from Facebook where I use my, where I, I use my real name. Uh, we're going to cover 10 Perl, feature, 10 Perl 6 features in 30 minutes. So the thing is we'll move just a little bit faster than my normal pace. And just as a qualifier, these are the Perl features that I happen to like playing with, not necessarily the Perl features that everyone will be using in production. Um, I, the big ones that I don't really cover in great depth are the hyper operators and concurrency and um, the concurrency and process threading and the new gather and take syntax. I don't cover those because I don't know them well enough to be able to talk in a crowd about them yet. The first, the zero thing that you should know is where to go to find more information. Starting out with obviously Perl6.org, which is where you can find the downloads, find the binaries for uh, Barracuda Star, you can find uh, the Microsoft um, MSI package installs, those are all available there, along with links to projects on GitHub, along with links to the full of Perl6 repository. Docs.perl6.org is where we have our online documentation. Uh, there is uh, support for Perl 6 documentation reading in the uh, Perl 6 binary, but I don't think we've yet decided quite how to do what you used to be able to do in Perl 5, be able to say Perl doc X, be able to say Perl 6 doc X. Correct me if I'm wrong, someone, but I don't think that's quite there yet. Modules.perl6.org is where you're going to find uh, the current ecosystem. Uh, CPAN will eventually be able to handle both Perl 5 and Perl 6 modules. According to what I understand, it can right now, but there is a switch to be thrown in order to make that work. That's not been done yet. Raku.org is where to get the binaries, to where to get the packages, to get the uh, DMG for uh, Mac or um, Darwin, um, uh, yeah, OSX Darwin as well. Rakota Brew is apparently um, not the, is not now the real way to do development, but it's what I generally choose just because I started out that way and haven't gone around to changing my own workflow. Panda is, along with uh, Zeph and one new installer, uh, the way to install Perl 6 modules. The big resource though, of course, is on IRC on Freno.net the uh, second line from the bottom there. Uh, we are on Pound Perl 6 and Pound Perl 6 dev. Uh, there may also eventually be a Pound Perl 6 tool, tool chain, but um, hop on into Pound Perl 6 and want, someone will be around. The last thing, if you want to get a overview of what Perl 6 can do in terms of code and all of the funky new operations that it provides, the best place to do that right now is to go out to rosettacode.org and search for Perl 6 to look at, I think right now we have several hundred, maybe, I don't know offhand, uh, at least several hundred um, code samples for doing basic mathematics, for doing uh, games, for doing um, ray tracing even, and stuff like that. But let's go over the uh, list of uh, main Let's go over the list that I feel are the important features to play with. Uh, the first thing is that Perl 6 grammar is a single pass grammar, so that you only have to ever read the file once. Uh, in Perl 5, with things like um, here docs and the m slash slash operator, you have to backtrack quite a ways in the grammar in Perl 5 and then go back forwards. In Perl 6, it is one pass, and as a consequence, when the compiler has an error, it can stop right there at the error point and give you much better and give you much better error documentation. I'll show you a brief example of that and how we are kind of a, a little bit ahead of the curve of say um, there's been recent um, recent buzz about uh, Swift and Rust error reporting and Perl six is pretty close. Unicode. Uh, we are very much Unicode friendly. I can't go into any real detail as to, 
as to how things are because we can, I can talk for hours about how uh, we fix correlation errors, how everything is now internally UTF-8, uh, how everything, how we have um, different ways to do, how we have different ways to match graphemes properly so that if you have, say, um, so that uh, the word Ardus, which is a town I think in uh, Ardus is either Sweden or Norway, someone will correct me, I'm sure, but A, a with a ring, A-R-H-U-S, that will actually report six characters everywhere in Perl 6. Even with the fancy ring, even if you type the A with a, another ring character, it will combine those two and still report the right number of characters. I can't really get into depth on that. The other thing that will help beginners immensely, and for those of us that have spent time many years in the trenches trying to explain why when you use one variable, you have to change the sigil to use a portion of that variable. That has now gone away. And if you are worried for your code, uh, there is, at the very least, a uh, blue tiger available on uh, modules.perl.org or on Perl 5 CPAN. There is Perl 2, Perl 6 that will handle that conversion for you automatically. So you, can go with, so you can go ahead and run that over your Perl 5 test suite and get it to a quasi Perl 6 working state. It will take care of most of the common little things that will trip you up. We'll get into that later on in the talk. Ma floating point math actually works. And finally, in 2015, we have function signatures, proper function signatures, which have defaults and optional expressions. Functions that are typed. Functions that can be dispatched based on those signatures. The rel expressions, uh, self-hosting is really not the proper term there. Uh, it's how Perl 6 is bootstrapped, it is its grammar library. Uh, you're all in Perl 5 used to the PCRV style rel expressions, which we've all come to know and sort of love. In Perl 6, we now have parser expression grammars which are vastly more powerful, but we have disguised them to look much like the Perl 5 grammars that we all know and love. Um, type classes, that's the term for mathematics, my background's in maths, and what should be obvious in, over the next few slides. Uh, we now have support for proper classes, for proper attributes in those classes, type checking on those attributes, um, I believe the course has already talked a bit about roles. I'll show you a brief example of that. And I, I can go on about how I recently figured out one way they're really, really powerful, but I can't get at that in the slides, unfortunately. Come down later and we'll talk about them. Um, if you're used to, say, Perl 5 and the overload function, trying to overload an operator, in Perl 6, that problem goes away. You can implement custom operators at any time. I'll show you a few examples. They can even be full Unicode, so you use, uh, if, you, if you so dare, you can even use the APL range in the Unicode to implement APL operators in Perl 6. I keep threatening to do that when I have some, some free time. Uh, the, la the last thing, of course, is concurrency and hyperoperators and the, prom and the uh, new promise model for uh, threading. Sort of, like, uh, sort of like Go, but again, I don't know that much about that, so we won't cover that in great depth. I will show you one example of a hyperoperator that can be parallelized. Well, sort of. All right, the first part, uh, single pass grammars. The, uh, you'll notice for one thing, the lack here of uh, parentheses in general. Uh, Perl, Perl 6 can walk through the start of the string, look for a character, and know how to jump around ins inside the grammar and properly match text for you. So parentheses, uh, they are one of the points where Perl 6 is quite space sensitive, but you don't really need them, I found. And I'm also playing around down here at the very bottom of the, 
of the file with the R slash operator to show how you can actually remove more parentheses. Because if you were actually computing an average in the normal fashion, you would want to sum, you would want to sum up the number of years in that string, divide it by the number of divide by the number of elements in that array. The R operate, the R modifier to the slash oper sorry, R modifier to the slash operator lets you turn around the statement and therefore get rid of the parentheses around sum that you would ordinarily need. And there's a small trick there. If you're used to Perl, if you're used to Perl 5 uh, bare words, and everyone here is, I'm sure, the, an, a major change is that everything inside a brace to co close brace block is code. So you can no longer say open brace, bare word, close brace, because that's no longer a valid construct in Perl 6. And if you're using uh, Blue Tiger to do text translation or Perl to Perl 6 to do translation, this will be taken care of for you. Instead, the new syntax is to use over here the pointy brackets. Those surround bare words or lists of bare words everywhere in the, in the language. It is consistent, so you no longer need to worry about whether a whether you're looking at say a map method that does a block, or whether you're looking at a if expression that is an expression, or whether a parenthesis is start of a list or an argument list, it's all now been consistent, been made consistent. Error messages. You'll you'll see here uh, there. You'll see here first of all. Functions, we have functions, function signatures up here with the uh, at A. Those actually work. They are valid. They are no longer prototypes. But there is a syntax error hiding here. At the second line, some parent at A, there should be some colon there. And what happens now in Perl 6 is that instead of the typical terse one line error that you get, Let's see if I got, uh -huh. hmm, look at my slide. Um, well, let me, you know, I'll worry about that later. You, you get this text now that describes exactly where the, uh, where the error is, and in fact, what it is, what the actual, what the compiler thinks the error is, the missing semicolon. Again, this is line two of the test file. So just after the by sum line, is pointing you exactly to the error. And it gives you a list of possible alternatives for that. This, you would probably need to know a little bit more about the internals of the compiler to know what those terms mean, but at least you're being guided to the, that point in the error. We are very much Unicode friendly, as you can see. We, we have down here the uh, $A, $alpha variable, we, ha we can use the, either the old-fashioned ASCII slash or the newfangled uh, division sign there for division. And we actually represent, we actually use all of the numbers in Unicode. So if you have a uh, Bengali digit two, you can, that's just another number two. If you use a fraction, you have the fraction one-tenths available to you. And again, dollar alpha, as long as your variable names start with an alphanumeric character, I'm sorry, alphabetical character, any Unicode, any alpha character, it's a valid variable name. No, you'll see no UTF-8 above. You just have to use UTF-8. Everything in Perl 6 is by definition UTF-8. Now, um, alpha, Greek letters, they're kind of a bit old school. But you can even go really old school if you want. This is a module of mine that is on the modules Perl 6 repository that lets you use Roman numerals. In fact, it lets you use the old, the old, old Unicode Roman numerals. Uh, when you go to Amsterdam next year for Yapsi, um, sometime go down to the Westerkerk. Uh, down by uh, on Frank's house. 
on the top of the cathedral there, you'll see the, word, you'll see the number 1666 written in very, very old school Roman numerals. This was before they had um, up there 0R and then that thing that looks like a CD. That was before they had M. So really old school. And of course, math works with these. So you can say IV divide by M and get 0 0.004. I, I had a little, I, I took about uh, two or three days debating whether I should use one R or zero R because, well, Roman numerals don't have zero. But, I, I, but eventually I stuck with uh, zero R to be the same as zero B and zero X, so a little bit boring. And in my spare time, I'm going to add zero capital B for Babylonian cuneiform, just to round out, just to round out things. These sigils, as I mentioned before, they, they now actually make sense. At, at, least for, at least for new beginners. For those of us up here in the community that have been working with Profi for longer than even I want to admit, um, this is the biggest change that you'll have, working with the language. First of all, you notice the uh, missing parentheses around the list there. Again, parentheses are kind of optional now in Perl 6, at least I find. And in my slides, I go to a little bit of trouble to get rid of them, just to prove that, that you can. You declare a variable at powers, and when you want to reference anything in that variable, you now say, you now say at powers brace. Sorry, at powers bracket, or percent power, or percent foo brace or percent foo point brackets for the uh, bare word. But, you, but now the rule is simpler. When you have it, when you declare a variable, you always use that variable name later on. There's no switching between contexts. There's no, do I use the dollar sign for a array slice? Because that can actually introduce bugs in Perl 5. Now it's consistent. Uh, this notation over here, by the way, the colon name, is now how you do a key value pair in Perl 6. That is now a default, that's now a basic type, which helps things. So that when, uh, Perl, so that when Perl 6 reads the implicit list there of colon name, parent, parent, whatever, and returns a list of pairs, you get back a, the compiler says, oh, you're returning a list of pairs. You must want a hash. Strict typing. Now, I, I mentioned before about math. Perl 6 is actually worse. Um, I, I assume that um, everyone here knows what this statement will, will turn in Perl without even thinking about it. It's quite obviously <sighs> 0 0.0000001, which actually is 2 to, the, uh, I'm going to get corrected here, but I believe it's 2 to the minus 48th power because of the way that floating point numbers actually work <laughs> in binary, according to the IEEE standard. Because, you only ha you only ha because obviously a floating point number only has so many digits of precision. So what happens is you add, one, you add uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, and you get a number with a little bit of round off. It's invisible, it's down in the guard digits, you'll never see that until you subtract the remainder. And then that little round off that accumulates down at, down all the way at the 17th digit of your expression shows up. Happens in Ruby 2, they make the same mistake. Python, same problem. Perl 6, you get the actual number. That's because what you're dealing with here, instead of 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, you're actually dealing with actual rational numbers. Numbers that have both a denominator, have both a numerator and a denominator. So when Perl 6 takes a look at your, at your numbers, it converts 0 0.1 to 1 tenth, 1 over 10. It converts 0 0.2 to 2 over 10. And when it subtracts 3 over 10 from 2 over 10 plus 1 over 10, 3, 3 minus 1 plus 2 is 0. So it says 0 over 10, so your answer is 0. And 
you no longer have to use if you're dealing with scientific notation or large numbers or large files. You no longer have to use big int, big float, big rat. Those are all built in for you. You can use as much memory as, as you want for your number. And finally, you can take a look down here and see what the actual value that Perl uses internally is. The, uh, everything in Perl 6 is an object. So what this does is, because obviously of the point, because of the uh, decimal here, 0 0.1 is internally a floating point, sorry, rational number, which is an object, and all objects can have methods called on them. So what the 0 0.1 parent here does is, is get you back the float, is get you back the rational object, and the nude operator on that strips away the details strips away the covering so you now see the bare value, which is, of course, 1 over 10. We were all covered function signatures, and here, down here, is a little bit more detail about how detailed uh, Perl 6 errors can get. It will say, sorry, you have a problem here. It will do type checking on your variables. It will count the number of arguments. So plus parent one, so plus invisible parent one comma two will be, we'll call the plus operator up there. Down here, plus of one comma two comma three will not. That will fail like a pile time. Regular expressions are what we all use on a day to day basis. And what you, what process tends to get a little bit of flack for because they've changed so much. Well, they really haven't if you, if you get down to it. For those of you that use the ability, for those of you that use name captures, that's all these pointing blocks are really hiding inside here. The integer with the pointing block. The stir with the pointing block. Those are just name captures. Nothing big, no drama. But uh, what this does here, aside from a few frilly bits, the uh, percent signs especially, this regular expression that you have is actually powerful enough in six lines to handle JSON, something that is hard or impossible to do in Perl 5 without resorting to the parent quest quest brace construct and looking for code blocks. This actually, this, actually handles, this actually handles a full, almost a full JSON statement. Uh, the one thing that it needs to do is alternate between either a pair or a value when checking data. We finally have proper object orientation. We finally have proper classes, and as Chris has alluded to beforehand, uh, we also have roles, which can be thought of as a segment of a class that you can introduce into any other class. For instance, up here, um, I have a role called humanoid that you can add to any class, and it will give you a left hand and a right hand. Uh, chirality is a fancy term for biology. That just means something has a left hand and a right hand. Like um, trivia bit, uh, the molecule, the, the aroma molecule for oranges and the aroma molecule for lemons are, is the same molecule. It's just twisted one way for oranges, twisted the other way for lemons. No biology note there. We now have enumerated types. So you can look, so you can have a left, so you have here a left hand and a right hand. You can have a setting for effort. If you're, say, doing a role playing game, that's what I'm working on right now. Here's a little bit new notation. Uh, for those of you that uh, started out, <laughs> remember back to when you started out in C and, or basic or whatever and wrote down uh, if A equal one or two and wonder why it didn't work because everyone knows that you need to write if A equal one or A equal two. Well, Perl 6, you don't need to do that anymore. With Perl 6, you finally have expressions like 
whatever, in this case being the star variable, is going, has to be greater than zero and has to be less than 18, all in one statement, no parentheses. And you're not comparing the star variable, which is this right here, twice. And of course, if you're, and of course, since we're doing a role-playing game, we need to, we want to show how that actually all works internally. So we have a character here named Wade. You equip him with two swords and have him tag, say, another random character that you create called Francis. Just and random. We have down here the, we have down here, actual attributes. Has is how you mark a class attribute. Classes, attributes can be typed. They don't have to be. You don't have to go through and type it and create types for everything and make everything enforce those types, but you can if you want to. And I found that it is a really powerful method to, to go in and start, just prototype your class with, art, with random variables, no, no typing whatsoever and then go in and gradually, in, in Perl code, introduce a new type. Well, find, the errors that that, find the errors that that new type catches, fix those, add a new type to a variable, fix the errors that that catches, go on. This is all done at compile time, usually. And it, get, it gives you a way to gradually ease into your, gradually ease into prototyping and gradually make sure that you have more and more constraints on your code to make sure that it runs the way that you think it should rather than the way the compiler thinks that it should. Finally, uh, I've, I've been glossing over this a little bit. Um, in Perl 6, um, I, I know a lot of you have used Perl 5, obviously, and um, one of the problems that you have with Perl 5 functions is or at least the first thing that you learn is when you pass in two lists to a function, Perl 5 flattens those. It take, if you have, say, sub foo parent, if you call, say, sub foo with at a comma at b, well, Perl 5 does the natural thing and just jams together at a and at b into one list and pass them along to your function. Natural, after you've had a few after you've had a few weeks to think about that, after you've been explained, after you had this explained to you online, or a after you've looked through the do documentation and found out for yourself why this actually works. In Perl 6, that behavior is now more rational. In, in Perl 6, I found personally that I don't use references all that much anymore. I have a few modules in uh, the modules Perl org that use references, and I'm slowly rewinding those to get rid of references now that I understand how they work. This here, the despite the brace, is just a list of lists, not a list of list references, not a list of scalars that are blessed to something else. This is a list of lists, much like what you would get if you were, say, working with Lisp or um, Lisp or um, Lisp fourth. Um, scheme, et cetera, an, an actual list. So you would be able to reference this now with at, with, um, say, um, at, at doctors, you know, at, at line, bracket zero, bracket zero, to get the word Tyler out of the string. So you no longer need to worry about references. Last, lastly, at, at least for me, we have, uh, we have custom operators. Instead of the old way to do overloading and strings, you can now do, you can now actually write sigma zero dot 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 infinity. And because infinity is, well, infinity, this actually, well, compiles. It will run, it might take a while, <laughs> but, it, but this actually will work. 
if you have a laptop open, go ahead and replace if any with 10, and it will actually compile and run. And this also shows as well how uh, Perl 6 handles this because they are both, because they can be of finite or infinite extent. So Perl 6 will go through the script, will go through your list and say, okay, the start is zero. You haven't specified any increment, so I'll assume one. So it will add, so it will add up zero plus the next element one plus the next element two plus the next element three and try to do so until infinity or until your disk burns out. Ah. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Of course. <laughs> but um, mic drop. Okay. And uh, just just a tease here as well. You'll you'll see if, as part of that statement, there's this weird bracket plus close bracket. Uh, that is borrowed from um, I, I I first knew about the actual reduce operator in uh, Scheme, but there's also re reduction operators in um, Haskell, in Scala, etc. What that does is takes the list here, F values, and reduces the list, much like a map reduce would in, say, the Google architecture, parallelized as well. So, it will, so this will actually, if you give it a finite list, it will parallelize across cores to do the reduce operation in certain situations. <coughs> but what that does is reduces pairwise. So you have zero plus one, reduces that to one, goes to the next operator, one plus one plus two, reduces that to three, two, three plus three, reduces that to six. So it's doing pairwise reduction on your lists. I, I teased a little bit about how powerful the new, uh, how powerful the new operators are with the R modifier to expressions. Um, also, the core doesn't implement anything like plus, like plus equals or slash equals directly. Instead, equal sign is a modifier to the plus operator, which you can, add, which you can modify yourself. And when you create your own prefix operators or infix operators, you get, you get the other modifiers for free. And finally, um, I don't have any actual content for the, uh, for the subroutines down here, for the postfix and prefix operators here, but, uh, this, but the uh, W plus and W minus statements will compile, and uh, they're running on all of your hardware right now, in fact. They're running on your, that's running on your, on your laptop. That's running right here in this little area of space, because that's the because that is the uh, gauge metric for, uh, but for um, the supersymmetric standard model for particle physics. So it is running everywhere right now in this room. In constant time, of course. A few people get that, get that joke nowadays, that's good. And lastly, um, I, I will cover one more thing. Uh, don't worry too much about the outside here. Focus here instead on the, la on the bit down below the given, the if method eek read or update or delete. This is, the, this is the last bit because normally what you would write down is you would write this down as if method eek read or method eek update or method eek delete. What we've done here is taken the read or update or delete and combine them, much like Schrodinger's cat. It, they are now existing in a quantum superposition of, of states. So the text here for read, pipe, update, pipe, delete is now a multi-way match that you can abstract out and apply that as a function. So you could, if you choose, one moment.
one of the endangered of live demos. We've now just refactored our expression, our quantum expression, our our non-collapse, our non-collapse state of read slash update slash delete into a single variable, and applying that to and applying that as a method. So we say if method equals a compound quantum state of read or update or delete, you can also use add signs here. Although I don't know how you make a string that simultaneously read and update and delete. You probably could do that with a regular expression. This is a very flexible method. And in fact, you can actually uh, use the same technique here on, say, array elements or on subroutines to create a quantum superposition of your read met validation combined with your update validation, combined with your delete validation. All in one sub, all within one superposed subroutine. And I am one, and I am winding up on time now. So thank you. Uh, are there questions? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Namaste.